Well, Benny, what did we pick up today? Something a little different. I've never owned one of these before. Let's go check it out. What do you think it is? Think you're gonna like it? Let's see. Polaris Big Boss 6x6. Six wheel drive on this thing. Picked this thing up for 1650 yesterday. It's in pretty good shape. All brand new tires on it. The guy just put those on. He said he picked it up for 2000 and put like $800 worth of parts into it. So he's got 28 into it and I paid 1650 for it. So. I think we did pretty good. The seat is a little ripped, but uh, that's not too bad, and it needs a battery. He did say electric start did work, but you can see it's missing the battery. And he said the brakes are a little soft on it. So, let's get it off the trailer, start working on it. This thing is a tank. All right, so here it is, the 1993 Polaris Big Boss 6x6. Thing's pretty sweet. It's got the dump bed. Oh, it just folds down like that. You can lift this guy up. That's pretty nice. This is all steel, by the way. Not plastic like the UTVs made today. Nice heavy duty steel. It does have the drop down tailgate in the back. We'll look at that in a little bit. That wire's broken off. That one's not though. Everything is steel on this thing. And it does have a little carrier in the back too. Thing's pretty cool. Let's see what's in here. So this is the mounting plate for the back. There used to be a pad for the back uh, seat there. Looks like some wires for a winch. We've got a 10 millimeter wrench in there. A couple miscellaneous bolts. Spark plug puller tape. Yeah, it's kind of nifty. Kind of like that little compartment back there. And that's the original with the machine. It says Polaris on it and matches. But uh, you can see there's 4,040 miles on this thing, which isn't too much for an old machine. The electric start was rerouted to be right here. We'll have to see if that works. Just has the override for reverse, on off, all the lights. I'm not sure if the lights work, we're gonna have to check that. And then the six by six button right here. We'll have to see if that works too. Make sure everything works on this thing. It does start and run and go into gear. Um, however, it only goes about 25 miles an hour right now. So I'm thinking it's a car problem, hopefully. This thing is two stroke, so it should be fairly simple to work on. The guy said the oil pump was working, and he said he put new oil in this. Yeah, you can see the, the blue oil in there for the injector. Coolant goes right here, because this thing is liquid cooled. We'll have to check the coolant, make sure that's all there. And the seat is missing a latch, so the seat doesn't really latch down very well. Let's see what's going on here. He said the carburetor was cleaned recently by his friend, 
But uh, we'll have to check and make sure uh, nothing's wrong with it. Looks like newer gas lines as well with the new filter. It's pretty nice. Looks like a couple things in the air filter though, so we have to check that out. I can see some nuts down in there. Might have to check that out. Maybe the air filter's clogged. Definitely a possibility. But uh, this thing's got high, low, reverse, and neutral on it. Right now, the high is hard to get into when the machine is running. I think the idle's just a little bit too high on it. So we'll have to check that out. Tires are brand new, like I said before. Brand new tread. He said he just had those installed. So those look really good. He's got the hitch on the back. And uh, you can see back here, it's pretty, pretty crazy. I've never owned one of these before, so this is all new to me. But you can see the two different sets of suspension in the back, instead of the one. And then you've got the chain going from the axle that is usually here to the new axle back here. It looks like there's some grease fittings on there that we can get to. And then this thing has the transmission right here, which we're probably going to drain the transmission oil and uh, change that. You check it right here with this dipstick, that little gold piece sticking out. Have to look at that. The, the recoil does work on this thing. It does feel like it has pretty good compression. We'll check the compression today as well, just to make sure. But yeah, overall, not a terrible machine. Looks like a new master cylinder too. This one's original. So pretty clean machine for the year. Dump bed is in good shape. It's not all rusted out. A lot of times these have big holes in it. So everything's looking pretty good. The goal is to get this thing running and driving good, and then we're gonna take it to the land and uh, try to pull up that snowmobile we tried to pull out a while ago. And uh, we're gonna try to sell that snowmobile because it's just sitting on the land and the farmer has to get out there to farm the field, so we don't want all that crap in the way. So this should be able to pull it out no problem, being a six by six, but we will see. We gotta get this thing running right before. So without further ado, let's jump into it and uh, start fixing up this thing. All right, just picked up this brand new battery. This was 100 bucks, like 105. And um, so we're up to what now, 1750 on this thing. So it's getting up there in price, but if we can get it to run properly, it's gonna be worth it. So let's get this battery installed and we'll see if the lights work, the neutral light works, and the six by six button works because right now without the battery, obviously your lights are not going to work or turn on or Anything, so. All right, this thing came with a battery, but it was junk, so none of the lights or anything were working on it. So we're gonna see today if all that stuff works. The guy said it did, so. We'll have to see it here. I like these batteries without the little square piece that goes underneath here where you can just screw it right into the top. I hate those little square nuts that go underneath. It's like impossible to get them to line up, especially if you have multiple wires. They never reach the correct distance. <laughs> New batteries installed. See what happens. Oh yeah, neutral light turned on. That's good. Six by six work. I think it has to be in gear. There we go. Oh yeah. Cool. Lights work. Doesn't look like the lights are working. Might have to be running for them to work. Can't remember. Electric start work. Electric starts working. All right. 
So it looks like everything's working. We'll have to check the lights when we get this thing to uh, run properly. But right now the brakes actually look like they're working. They're a little squishy, but not horrible. Definitely working. I can't move it at all. So it feels like they're working. This is for the rear brake. This is for the front brake. All right, I think we're gonna start with the air filter. I saw a couple nuts in there, so there might be a mouse or a squirrel living in there, so let's check that out first. Not very often you see the original hardware on here. That's pretty cool. So these are all original. Really hard to get off though. I'm assuming the guy did not have the air filter off. Maybe he did. But you probably didn't want to strip them out, which I can see they're going to do. <laughs> Darn it. So I think that's why he didn't have them off. We got the air box off. I can't get the lid off though. We're gonna work at that a little bit, but let's just see if anything comes out. I can hear stuff in there. Yeah, I can hear like a bunch of nuts and stuff in there. Listen to that. So I'd like to see what that air filter looks like. Just cutting these off. It's, they're impossible to get off. Alright, that's three, one more. What you can do is just put new bolts in here. That's what we're gonna do. All right, last one. in here. We didn't even damage the plate. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Piece. All right. Well, air filter didn't look that bad. It's dirty. It's not like horrible. We wanted to rule that out. I, I'm gonna blow that out with the air compressor. Get off all that crap. You can see there's a bunch of stuff piled in there, so. It was definitely limiting the airflow, but I don't think it was the main problem. And you can see all the stuff in there. A couple things. See all the dirt coming out of there when you hit it? So, it was definitely packed full of stuff. All that stuff coming out. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff in there. So we'll get that cleaned up and reinstalled. All right, new hardware on here and air filters all cleaned. So let's check out that carb next. All right, gotta get off the gas line here first. Just gonna keep on going. I guess so. Let's not turn it off here. Alright.
Looks like we got a breather hose right here going into the frame. choke and you got the slide right here. Let's see if the slide was in the correct way. Sometimes that can be put in incorrectly. Nope, that was in the correct way. Alright. Get the choke out of there. is all out, completely out. All right, let's take a look at that. All right, just checking out the needle. Looks like this might be a problem right here. See how that needle's going? In and out like that. And you check in here, that plate wasn't down all the way. That should be into a little slot. Move that plate over a little bit. It should be, let's see here. that yeah that should not be through there I don't think all right so somebody put that plate through there I don't think that's how it's supposed to go I think it's supposed to go in here. And the plate goes in after. I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, like that. See, now the plate's all the way down. That's how it's supposed to go. And the spring just compresses that, so now the needle doesn't go up and down like that. So that was one problem. That wasn't seating properly. All right, onto the carb. All right, let's check out this carb. See if the guy's friend cleaned it correctly. I'm sure he did, but it doesn't hurt to double check. That looks good. Pretty pitted in there. Let's just see the opening right here. It's open. Yep. That looks good. That passageway is open. Take a look at this guy. 
needle looks like it's working properly. Looks like this thing's running a 210 for the main. Let's see if that's clogged up at all. Oh, there's a little gunk in the main. Check that out. See a little bit of gunk on there? Partially clogging that up. I can't even see through it. Yeah, that main jet that main jet is clogged. So that was probably the main culprit of why it wasn't going over 25 miles an hour. Yeah, that, that thing's clogged. Wow, I've never seen a main jet clogged. That's something. Alright. Let's see what that pilot's doing. And pilot was clear. Pilot is a 30. Little baby pilot. <laughs> All right. Then the air screw right here. How many turns out was that? Let's just take a look. One, exactly one turn. There's the spring. All right, all that looks good. We're gonna try to pop out that needle. It's tough to get out. I don't think we're getting that out. I wanna break off this little thing right here. The needle looks like it's working, so. If we have a gas leak, we're going to have to try to take that seat out of there and put a new gasket in there. But um, we're just going to leave it for now. I don't want to risk breaking that off. This was a little gunked up as well. You can see. I'm going to clean that off nice. <laughs> All right, let's clean out this carburetor and put it back together. So we found out that the main jet was clogged, and uh, I think that was going to be our culprit. All right, we got the air box back in, the car back in. The carburetor should be situated now and the air box should be fixed. So this whole system right here is good to go. Let's uh, check out the coolant next. I'm curious to see if there's anything in there. All right. Anything in here. Looks a little low to me. Yeah, she's a tad low. There's a little bit in there. But we'll top that off quick. It wasn't that low, but we topped her off just in case. So now it's topped off. All right, these are kind of notorious for having transmission problems. People grind the gears all the time. So let's just check and see what that oil in here looks like. So right in here, there's a little dipstick with a magnet on it. Should be able to pull that right out. And look at the end of that. You can see there's some shavings on there. It's pretty typical. That's what it's made there for. As long as we don't have any big chunks or anything, we should be fine. But uh, I'll show you guys how to drain this too. Kind of a weird, kind of a weird system. Let me see if there's anything in there. It should be right up to the top here. Oh yeah, there's, there's a lot in there. 
It looks like it was just filled up. Hope you guys can see in there. See that? It's right up to the top there. So that looks good. It looks nice and clear. It's hard to see. But uh, there's definitely a bunch in there. We'll get a color reading with the, uh, the dipstick here quick. Yeah, that's, that's really nice and clear. So that was just... Uh, that was just changed out, it looks like. Pretty sure. Feels pretty thin. It smells like gas, actually. So we're gonna definitely change that out. I should not be smelling like gas. Why would that be smelling like gas? That's weird. Huh. It's really thin too. Yeah, we'll change it out. Let's see if I can take you guys underneath here with me to check out the, uh, the drain bolt for this thing. So right underneath here, right there, you can see it right here. So, this bolt needs to be cracked open. And what you do is you crack this big one over here first. This nut on here, you back that out this way. And then you actually push this longer bolt in so then you can take out the whole plug. It's kind of a process. So we're gonna try to loosen that up and uh, drain that oil out, see what that looks like. All right, so the drain plug down here looks like it was messed with. Um, and there's supposed to be a, a second nut on the other side of the other nut, but there isn't one. And it's just a bolt with one nut. And you can't back out the bolt because it hits the frame. So somebody must have taken out this engine at one point, or the transmission out at one point, fixed it, put it back in with the drain plug in wrong. So we're gonna have to siphon out the old oil here. We'll see if this works. We've got uh, a siphon with a small line hooked up to it. And we're just going to shove that in there and see if this thing works. I don't know if it's going to have enough suction to do anything, but we'll see. Oh yeah, look at it coming up. Oh yeah, that's working great. That's like straight gas. That's crazy. Yeah, good thing we're changing that out. the transmission fluid that was in there. You can see it's just straight up gas. So that was bad. <laughs> Let's add some 80 weight to it. That's what it calls for in the manual. So we'll add some 80 weight to it. It shouldn't take a whole lot. This is about three fourths of a quart. Oh yeah, it's getting up there. So just a little bit more and we should be good. Alright, we're gonna stick our dipstick in there to see where we're at. And you can see we're all the way up. So that's a little thicker now than it was before, before it was like straight up gas. So 
we are gonna be good to go. That is all fixed. At least we have some oil in there now. It makes me feel better about things. All right, I think pretty much everything is fixed on this thing. I wanted to quick grease up these fittings back here just before we start it up for the first time here. Oh, this was really low on grease. Jeez. There, it's coming out now. All right. All right, everything should be pretty much fixed on this thing. Let's see if she starts up with the electric start now. Fuel, choke it. Idling nicely. Doesn't look like the headlights are working. Headlights aren't working. I hear a little rattle down here. Sometimes they have that though. Let's see if it goes away with idling it up. Yeah, it goes away with idling it up. Smoking. So oil injector must be working. I think this thing's ready for the first test drive. We'll have to see if that six by six button's gonna work. I'm excited. Vinny, come here. Come here. Come here. Sit. Shake. Shake. Sit. Shake. Ah, good treat, huh? That's some good stuff. That's for helping with the that's for helping with the four-wheeler today. Yeah, that's what you get, a good treat, yeah. Uh, good stuff, huh? Good stuff. <laughs> good boy.
made it out here with the big boss. So today we're gonna be picking up some rocks as well. The farmer is coming out to plant pretty soon here. So we're gonna fill this thing up with rocks and uh, see how much that can hold as well. You can see them all scattered throughout the field. Plus I wanna get them out of there uh, for when I go riding. Yeah, let's go test this thing out. See what this thing can do. It's a big boss, so it should be able to do a lot. <laughs> All right, let's see what the big boss can do today. I know this reserve doesn't work either on here. Doesn't like to go all the way up for reserve. So we'll keep an eye on that. Hopefully we don't run out of gas here. But the six by six is working. That's the main thing. All right, we'll take it for a ride first and then we'll get to work. We gotta do the, the snowmobile, pull that out of here. Then we gotta pick up some rocks for the farmer, so. Head out of here. Hey, it's going pretty good. We're over 30 miles an hour. Woo -hoo -hoo! 35. Oh, here's the snow hill. Can it climb up this? It's cool, we still have snow. It's more like ice, actually. <laughs> Goes right through it, no problem. That was easy. That's a little better than the, uh, the bike. <laughs> the Rokan. I wish we had really deep snow for this thing to go through, but we don't. Woo! Turkey hunting's coming up too. I gotta scout out some spots for the turkey. Probably just wait right out in the field for them, honestly. Oh, there's deer, look at that. <laughs> look at him go. Wow, that was cool. No problem climbing up that hill. Make sure all wheels are spinning. Yeah. I feel like I can go anywhere with this thing. <laughs> Climb over this rock here. Here's the trail. So far, I'm liking this thing a lot.
take it out of six by six. See what the difference is here. Oh, almost tipped her over. Yeah, it doesn't grab as good. It's a little bumpy. <laughs> Here's the snowmobile we have to pull out. We'll come back for that. Let's go pick up some rocks here. I saw a couple over here. Let's see how fast we can get up to. Thirty-five. Thirty-seven. There's a rock right there. Yeah, these big boys. I think this is the one I hit last year. I want to make a rock wall over here, so if I can find a, if I can find big enough rocks, start doing that. I wonder how much this thing can uh, hold. These would actually be good landscaping rocks too for my house, which I have to do this year. Lots of rocks over in this area. That's a cool one. Be a dead animal. Never mind. <laughs> Go 
looks like a deer right there. Deer fur. There's the skid steer and the uh, hovercraft. Almost hit 40 there. These things are supposed to go 44 miles an hour. So at least we fixed the problem where it was only going 25. See what happens here. Sitting low. There we go, there's low. Oh yeah, baby. problem. I'm gonna put this right over here. All right, that way I can get to it a little easier with the truck if I have to. This thing's in pretty good shape, isn't it? The Panther 340. Pretty nice. All right, we're gonna go continue to pick up some rocks, I think. All right, well, the Polaris Big Boss is awesome. It's definitely a boss machine. <laughs> this thing can pretty much do anything. It, uh, 
hauled those rocks no problem, pulled the uh, snowmobile no problem. So I, I'm liking it a lot. It is a super useful machine. It being a 350, has plenty of power. All six wheels are moving. The thing is just really fun to drive. And it feels like you're just driving a tank. It feels like you're unstoppable driving this thing. So I'm, I'm impressed with it. I like it a lot. So the dump bed was working good. I like the little compartment right here that's really useful for like straps and stuff like that. The thing is awesome. So that's the video on the Big Boss 6x6. Highly recommend you guys go buy one. If you find one, they're awesome. Most UTVs have a dump box, but UTVs are huge and you can't get through places like this. So with a four wheeler, you can pretty much go anywhere, which is nice. But yeah, everything's fixed on this thing. Brakes work. Uh, this thing tops out probably around 40 miles an hour. And um, everything's working great. So this one is done. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next one. And until next time, we are out.